In this series of videos, I will seek to conclude in a detailed trend forecast for the stock market for the whole of the remainder of 2018. This analysis is based on my articles being posted at the Market Oracle site. Furthermore, the whole of this analysis was made available to my patrons for their support of my work. So, for immediate first access to this and all of my future analysis, then do consider becoming a patron by supporting my work for as little as $3 per month. Trumponomics in a nutshell can be summed up as a mismatch of policies built on tweaks that has surprisingly so far delivered relative stock market strength for the broad US markets this year that has the Dow currently trading at 25,064 marginally up from the start of the year opening level of 24,720 while standing up 7.5% from its early April low of 23,300. So, as the Dow chart illustrates, the stock market has refused to fall this year despite the chaos of the unfolding trade war that has been the focus of the mainstream press for the whole of this year. Furthermore, the Dow even failed to achieve my relatively mild early year expectations for a correction down to 23,000, just avoiding that trough by 300 points or so. Though it remains to be seen if this means that the stock market is preparing to break higher to new all times high anytime soon, which will be the focus of this analysis to determine. So despite Fed interest rates tightening that clearly is being offset by Trump money printing and US government debt, which of course is another reality that is not reflected in Trump rhetoric of seeking to correct Obama era deficit spending. As one can take a good 80% of that which spouts from Trump's mouth with a pinch of salt as he literally flip-flops on where he stands depending on who is sat in front of him. Just as we witnessed with the would-be, wouldn't-be saga concerning Russian interference in the 2016 US presidential election so as to help get Putin's Mancurian candidate elected. Deficit reality is that Trump has exploded the US budget deficit so that the spending more than offsets Fed tightening, hence the observed relative economic and stock market strength. The deficit projections under Trump, compared to Obama's last term in office, clearly point to another busted Trump mantra, one of Trump seeking to correct out of control Obama deficit spending when the opposite is true noting that Obama's first term followed George Bush's disastrous presidency who literally handed Obama an economy that was in a state of economic collapse with the financial markets teetering on the brink of Armageddon. Trump deficit spending is definitely inflationary and thus a net positive for assets that are leveraged to inflation such as stocks and housing that I will cover in depth over the coming months as my existing US house prices long term trend forecast has long since matured and which proved remarkably accurate especially given that it ran on a, against a wall of worry with perpetual doom merchants always calling for the US housing market's imminent collapse when the opposite materialised. Trumponomics in many ways is similar to Reaganomics However, there the objective was to defeat the Soviet Empire. While today we have President Trump apparently seeking to dismantle the US Empire, trying to create a world that is ripe for conflict, hence the Trump Reset War with China series. All of which is good for remaining exposed to the defense sector and of course highly inflationary where a growing economy is good for asset prices that tend to be leveraged to inflation such as stocks. And why China lost the trade war even before it began. As I mentioned earlier in this video, the Dow has shown remarkable strength in the face of Trump trade war chaos. So let's take a look at China's SSEC index. Well, when comparing the two charts, it should be obvious to all that not only who will lose the trade war, but that China has already lost the trade war even before it's got going. This is because the markets discount the future. 
the numbers speak for themselves. The SSCC is down by a severe 29% from its 2018 high of 3587, whilst the Dow stands just 5.5% down from its 2018 high. Imagine if the Dow had fallen by near 30%, how much panic there would be in the mainstream media about the collapse in stock prices. So capital flight is clearly underway in China at an alarming rate and going to where? The United States of course. For whilst the consensus that populates the mainstream press continues to repeat the mantra that no one wins a trade war, however what they fail to comprehend is capital flows that far exceed the headline trade tariffs figures. And what we see playing out in the Chinese stock market is likely taking place right across the spectrum of China's markets as scared investors ditch Chinese holdings in favour of safer destinations, mainly the United States and perhaps some other Western markets. So the big unintended consequences of the trade war against China and much of the rest of the world is not really the actual impact of the tariffs themselves, but rather the much larger capital flows already underway that dwarf the actual headline trade tariff numbers. And as the above charts illustrate, this is a big net positive for US stock market and probably housing market as well to the detriment of all the large trade surplus nations who just cannot win this trade war that the markets fully understand are seeking to discount by disinvesting from them. At the end of the day, I see the trade war in terms of being a big comeuppance a day of reckoning for the Chinese crime syndicate that has conned and stolen its way to development. As the Chinese economy experiences trade war pain then expect the always behind the curve mainstream media to start reporting on how China has been ripping off and conning other nations across the world for decades. This analysis continues in part 2 that will take a look at the inflationary stock stealth bull market. So ensure you are subscribed to my YouTube channel for that video. Whilst for immediate first access to all of my analysis then do consider supporting my work by becoming a patron for as little as $3 per month.